Don Liu and Fiery here uh, lodging a speaking objection, which is technically not permissible. Let me bring in George Brockler and Judge Kimberly Bando to weigh in on this one. Uh, George, to you first. Uh, what did you think in hearing that little bit there from John Lewin? Well, I think he's clearly exercised and probably appropriately so. It sounds like they probably had some discussions outside the presence of the jury about the lengths they could go to to get into things like this with Morris Black. Maybe it's character evidence, maybe it's speculation, maybe it's hearsay, I don't know. Um, and it, he clearly believes that the defense is pushing the envelope on that. And he objected, he got it sustained, but then he went further and started a speaking objection. I think the judge was right to yank the chain on him and say, hey, that's just not how we do it, and that's where we're at. George, thank you. Judge Kimberly, I want to ask you something, um, and this is kind of technical with the rules of evidence here. I, I keep hearing the request to have something stricken from the record, but when it's a jury trial, don't the attorneys also have to be cognizant of having the judge instruct the jury to disregard, too, what they just heard, uh, where the court, when it's just a bench trial, the judge would know to disregard it, you know, he or she on the bench just being the finder of fact. But when you have 12 people in the box who may not know that, uh, your thoughts on that, please. Yeah, I absolutely agree. They def I would be asking the jury to make sure they tell the judge, to make sure they instruct the jury to disregard whatever he said, um, because you don't want them thinking that they can, you know, keep that in their memory. And hopefully he will give a curative instruction at some point about what that meant at the beginning and also at the end before he charges. Right, right, Judge. And did you think that this judge presiding over this case, Judge Mark Wyndham, seemed a little bit annoyed there, the way he said to John Lewin, don't make an objection that way, right? It seemed like he didn't like the speaking objection because it is improper, huh? Yeah, he did seem mm -hmm. like he's like he trying to put a lid on whatever was about to open a Pandora's box. I agree. It must have been some type of motion and limiting file where they weren't supposed to get into this and it looked like they were trying to find a backdoor way and the judge was like, no, 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 don't even say it out loud. Right. Come up here and we're going to talk about it. <laughs> exactly. You two approach. Come on up. Uh, judge Kimberly and George Brockler, I want to talk to you both about the defendant's voice. Uh, George, to you first on this one, please. Several folks, uh, our lawyer view loyal viewers who are watching and tweeting live as this trial is going on, are noticing a difference in... Robert Durst's voice. It seems like today it's weaker and some of them are yep. feeling like at certain points in the questioning where he maybe appear to be a little nervous or it's getting to something really critical, it's when he has seems to have some more difficulty. Uh, George, your thoughts, have you noticed any of that? Yeah, clearly this is the weakest and frailest his voice has been throughout the uh, the trial so far. Now, again, dude's 372 years old and he's on the stand for the fourth day. Right. Um, I think it gives the impression that he's being worn down just by the ordeal itself, whether or not it's a reflection of his credibility or not. I, I don't know that I buy that entirely. I'd like to go back and watch it, but even his gesture with Hey, I'd like to get a drink of water and the very <laughs> right. frail, slow movement to go get it and drink it. It all enhances this idea of a feeble old man who is being put to this great ordeal. I think the defense thinks it works to their advantage. The question is, and I'd be interested to see what the judge says, is whether or not a jury will buy that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. He couldn't even unscrew the cap when he went to take a drink of water. He asked Dick DeGarren to do it. He said, here, can you open this? Uh, so is it real? Is it an act? Everybody on Twitter is debating. George Brockler, Judge Kimberly Bando, I am going to ask you to both stay put uh, for more analysis. We're going to squeeze in a break because the jury is still not uh, ready to hear uh, more testimony. They're still at that sidebar outside the jury's presence. We'll be right back next. Thanks for staying with us here on Court TV Live. I'm Julie Grant. They are still on a break in the Jinx murder trial. And with the other trial that we're monitoring in North Dakota for you versus defendant Chad Isaac, they are on their lunch break. And tonight on Closing Arguments with Vinnie Politan, you'll get to see all of the testimony you might have missed while we've been live in Robert Durst's case. So uh, that being said, as we're still waiting for that sidebar uh, to break up, we believe they're probably in the judge's chambers. That's usually where they go to do an extended sidebar bar outside the jury's presence. We have two outstanding legal analyst guests on the program today. Joining us from Colorado, former district attorney from Colorado's 18th Judicial Circuit, George Brockler, and in Atlanta, Georgia, Judge Kimberly Bando, who is also a practicing criminal defense attorney and former prosecutor. I, I want to just get your assessments of how, how 
Robert Durst is faring so far today. Do you feel like today is a bit of a different day overall for him and as to how well he's doing presenting his side of the story? George, I'll begin with you first, please. Uh, yeah, aside from the comments we made about how frail he seems, he's being confronted with some very critical questions to frame in advance of cross-examination key points to the prosecution's case. Uh, the letter, his presence in the home, his acts of self-preservation, changing his appearance to look like a woman and the motivations for it, and then this final portion that we're starting to hear about here with uh, what took place down in Texas when he ultimately got uh, acquitted of that charge. These are all key components of the defense in this case to address before the prosecutor can get to them. Um, I think he's doing as well as can be expected, but in the absence of cross-examination, we're not going to really know yet how much he's opened himself up. Right. That's a good point, too. Judge Kimberly Bando, same question to you. How is he faring in your view, please? It appears to me that he's actually losing his um, his gumption, his um, he seen, and I don't know if that's on purpose or if he's genuinely just getting tired and bogged down with the weight of what he's going through. So he's actually just emotionally tired, and, and we're seeing that. But he definitely looks like he's lost whatever little thunder he had at the end of Mm-hmm. Right. You know, today definitely, as, as we noted previously, he seems weaker. His voice seems to be a little more high-pitched, and it seems like he's kind of pushing to get the words out. You notice he's sort of taking deeper breaths and, and trying uh, to speak as loud as possible, but, but seems to be struggling here. And today, uh, you know, and I'm looking at our wonderful viewers tweeting live with us as we're broadcasting the testimony. It seems like when he's giving all these details, it's definitely painting a vivid picture. But some are questioning how in the world can this guy who is 78 years old and experiencing all these health problems recall taking a Percocet pill, for example, and having a migraine headache the night before he found Susan Berman dead? Uh, George, uh, what do you think about all these details? Helpful, harmful, or both? I think this is great fodder for the prosecution to ask as well. I think those are very insightful viewer uh, tweets. And that is 20 years ago, this happens. It's not even brought back up for another 15 years. I'll be honest with you, the most memorable things in my life have been the birth of my children. I can remember some of those things with incredible detail and others. My wife will talk about stuff. I'll be like, I, was I there for that? I don't even <laughs> remember any of that. How he's able to remember this with this kind of clarity, especially uh, having fought in the revolution, uh, really difficult to imagine. Appreciate you being so honest about that. Yeah, I mean, I, I struggle to remember things from last week, the other day. I mean, life is, is busy. We all know that. And this guy, I mean, he's remembering the pathway he walked and Judge Kimberly, how he's talking about he peered through the window and then went to the door and remembers there are three dogs, but maybe there were two. And I, like, I, I'm watching this thinking, pants on fire. I, it's, I don't think he's helping himself. <laughs> um, what do you think about all the details, please, Judge? No, I mean, I would agree. The only thing that I'm kind of Kind of giving him the benefit of doubt on this because he's a writer that maybe even been an artist that you pay attention to little details like that because of your like artistic mind. That's the only kind of benefit that I can give him of why he remembers details. That's a maybe really he just good point. Uh huh. Yeah. May oh, yeah. I think he definitely thinks differently than than all of us, <laughs> than everybody uh, who's ever walked the earth. Uh, this guy is uh, definitely a strange fellow. And uh, who knows what the jury is thinking about him. Uh, everybody is still waiting for testimony. And so we're going to squeeze in another break. We have to say goodbye to George Brockler. He's got other obligations. But, George, always great to have your expertise on Court TV Live. We hope to see you again soon. Anytime. Thanks for having me on. Thanks, Judge. And uh, Judge Kimberly Bando is going to be staying with us in our next hour. We're going to take that break right now. When we come back, we're going to see more of Robert Durst on the stand. Tweet us. Let us know what you think. Are you buying his testimony? He is on trial for the murder of his best friend, Susan Berman. We'll be right back.